Welcome to the fourth of six videos looking at how to launch a traditional project management project. And what we're going to do during this particular video is look at scope change management. So a typical scope change management process is a change, a, a new feature, a, a fix is uh, requested for a particular project that's submitted. It's reviewed, could be rejected, reworked by sending it back to the uh, submitter to add a, additional details, or it could be uh, approved for further study. And so what you're going to do then is go in and request a impact study, uh, look at the advantages and disadvantages associated with this particular change, and again, either reject the change, submit it for further uh, uh, definition so that it can be studied, or it can go forward and be approved, and then it has to be added to the uh, project plan and improved. So scope change, it's not an evil thing. Uh, you do need to keep in mind that as you're going through your project management uh, lifecycle models, uh, that certain models uh, are intolerant of change. They're, they don't. They, they assume there'll be very few uh, scope changes, and others embrace it. And so you have this wide spectrum of tools, approaches, um, and one of the key characteristics is how much do you know? How much uncertainty uh, is there in the uh, uh, solution and the goal? And scope change is, is is going to allow you to address that as you're working on the particular project. All right, well, let's spend a little bit of time now and talk about the uh, project impact statement. So you've gone through, you've, you've got some understanding of what they want to do, what the requirements are associated with this scope change. What you're now doing is going through and saying, all right, we need to prepare uh, an impact statement. And what we're really looking at is what are the advantages and disadvantages um, of uh, doing this? How is it going to affect the project in terms of new functionality? How is it going to affect the project in terms of project cost schedule uh, or software availability? Um, one of the uh, key examples that I, I tend to highlight is if you look at the Affordable Care uh, help, uh, website. Uh, at the end of that project, towards the end of that project, a new requirement, a scope change occurred where they wanted the users to log in. And they thought it was not a big deal, but it, it actually was. And that scope change uh, dramatically affected the uh, software quality uh, because it, that, that logging in and requires a touch really of all of the pages uh, within that uh, website and within that functionality. Okay, there's some other characteristics you want to look at as well. Uh, can you defer this to a later stage? Can we deploy the affordable healthcare site where it works flawlessly and then later on add this ability to log in and save your results and, and move forward uh, prior to uh, purchase? Um, and then uh, again, that gets that last bullet there is, is there the risk of, of destabilizing uh, the entire uh, product. And again, that's a good example of where that, in fact, occurred. All right, really two outcomes of that project impact uh, statement. Can it be accommodated or not accommodated? Okay, and so are you going to accept it or reject it? And then if you're going to accept it, can you do it within the uh, project resources and timelines, or are you going to have to extend the schedule? Um, you're going to be able to keep the schedule, but you need additional resources. Uh, it may be that you need additional resources and an extension of the deliverable schedule. You may even move to a multi-release strategy where you, you know, do an incremental uh, approach and you release uh, um, different versions uh, all according to a plan. So you have to kind of work through that and figure out uh, this project impact statement, what things you're going to address. Is it accommodated? Is it not accommodated? Well, this is what it actually looks like. It's actually not a very um, complex document. You want to keep it short. You do want to do one of these on every scope change. You do want to capture uh, this because it's really important to understand uh, the, the client requirements. And as these things emerge, you're learning, they're learning. Um, it may be that it's accommodated within this project. It may be it forms the basis for a new project uh, that you're going to add. But you've, you've got all of this documentation of what the real requirements uh, are going to be. So, and you've got to be careful, of course, as you're working through projects to make sure that uh, uh, the client understands this whole process and understands the idea that if you keep changing the requirements, you're never going to finish uh, the project. Remember, projects are finite. They have a start date. They have an end date. Um, and the only way you can honor that start and end date is to manage scope effectively. 
All right. Uh, one last uh, comment before we finish up this fourth of six videos. Remember, different project management lifecycle models have different approaches uh, uh, or, or different tolerances, if you will, for handling scope change. And so you want to pick a project management lifecycle model uh, associated uh, with the expected amount of scope change. And you want to have some mechanisms for dealing with scope change um, so that this doesn't become a crisis. This is just something that professionals do because we anticipated these changes. Well, guess what? That's it. That brings us to the end of the fourth of six videos looking at scope change. And what we're going to do is during our next uh, video, look at this idea of managerial reserves and a scope bank to help with scope change. So keep on studying, keep on learning, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.